What if a single software update could kick off a massive market-wide super cycle? Well, that's the big idea behind a pretty fascinating investment thesis we're going to dig into today. It all centers on Ethereum's next huge upgrade, something called Fusaka. And let me tell you, it comes with some incredibly bold predictions for the future of crypto. We're going to break down the tech, the market logic, and how it all supposedly connects. So just how bold are we talking? The whole argument we're unpacking claims this one upgrade could send Ethereum absolutely rocketing to a new all-time high. But, you know, it doesn't even stop there. It also points to a very specific stock, one you probably haven't heard of, and predicts it could see an even crazier surge because of it. Let's get right to the numbers. First up, ETH itself. The year-end price target, according to this thesis, is $7,000. Yeah, you heard that right. The core idea is that the fundamental nuts and bolts improvements from this Fusaka upgrade will be the spark that lights the fuse for a massive price rally. And then we have this number, $91. Now, that's not for Ethereum. It's for a stock called Bitmine Immersion Technologies, ticker BMNR. The thesis we're looking at here argues this company is so deeply tied to Ethereum's success that it's basically the ultimate way to play this potential rally. So how in the world do you connect a software update to a $91 stock price? Here's how we're going to break it all down. First, we're going to look at what the Fusaka upgrade actually is. Then we'll dive into the specific tech that's making it all happen. After that, we'll connect that tech to the price predictions, explore why this BNMR company is the supposed proxy, and finally, we'll walk through the actual math that gets us to that $91 target. All right, let's kick things off with the main event, the thing at the heart of all this, the Fusa Ka hard fork. Now, a hard fork is just a fancy way of saying a fundamental, permanent change to the blockchain's rules, a network-wide upgrade. And the key thing to get here is that this isn't just some routine patch. It's being framed as a massive turning point for all of Ethereum. Mark your calendars. According to this analysis, the key date is December 3rd, 2025. That's the day Fusaka is scheduled to go live. And people are calling this the biggest event for Ethereum since the merge. And you remember how huge that was, right? When the whole network switched from that power-hungry mining system to the much, much more efficient proof of stake. So what is Fusaka actually trying to do? Well, in short, it's a full-on assault against Ethereum's biggest weaknesses, those sky-high fees and slow speeds. And the goals are absolutely massive. We're talking about slashing costs on Layer 2 networks. You can think of those as the express lanes built right on top of Ethereum by a whopping 87%. It plans to do this by making way more data available for those Layer 2s, which in turn should just dramatically crank up the number of transactions the whole ecosystem can handle. The ultimate vision here is to make the network faster, cheaper, and even more decentralized, setting it up to be the backbone for a future with trillions of dollars in tokenized assets. Okay, okay, so lower fees and higher speeds. That all sounds fantastic. But how, technically, is Ethereum actually supposed to pull this off? Let's get into the weeds a little bit and look at the two core technologies that are really the engine behind this whole Fusica upgrade. So the first piece of the puzzle is something called PureDAS. Think about it like this. Imagine you need to confirm that a thousand-page book has been delivered correctly. Before PureDAS, you'd have to download and check every single one of those thousand pages. But with PureDAS, you just have to check a few random sentences from a few different pages. If those sentences are correct, you can be almost certain the whole book is there. This seemingly small change has a huge impact. It means the validators, the computers securing the network, need way, way less bandwidth, making the entire thing much more efficient. And next up, we have something called Verkle Trees. Now, this is basically a gigantic upgrade to Ethereum's internal filing system. It organizes all the network data so efficiently that the proofs you need to verify a transaction become about 10 times smaller. So why does that matter? Well, it means you don't need some beast of a supercomputer to help run and secure the network anymore. By lowering the hardware requirements, it just opens the door for way more people to participate, and that is a huge win for decentralization. And when you put these two technologies together, the projected impact is just staggering. I mean, look at this. The biggest headline here is the cost for a layer two transaction, which is projected to plummet from around 50 cents down to just six cents. You're also seeing a massive eightfold increase in what's called blob capacity. That's that dedicated data storage for the layer two networks. The real takeaway here isn't a network that's just a little bit better. It's a network that's an order of magnitude cheaper and way more powerful. So the tech is definitely impressive. But let's be real, the big question for any investor is, how does a tech upgrade actually translate into a higher price? Well, the thesis we're looking at makes a compelling case based on history, basically arguing that, hey, we've seen this movie before. 
The whole historical argument really zooms in on Ethereum's Pectra upgrade back in May of 2025. The analysis treats this event like a fractal, you know, a pattern that's really likely to repeat itself. And as you can see, after Pectra went live, the price of ETH rallied 168% over about three and a half months, hitting 4,500 bucks. The argument here is that this wasn't just random market noise. It was a direct reaction to the network getting fundamentally better. So then the logic becomes pretty simple, right? If a smaller upgrade like Pectra caused a 168% rally, what could a much, much bigger upgrade like Fuzaka do? The thesis just applies that same 168% pump. But here's the kicker. It argues Fuzaka is a way bigger deal. So starting from a hypothetical base price, this historical pattern is exactly what leads to those bold predictions we saw earlier. This parallel, it's really the cornerstone of the whole investment case. But this thesis isn't just about cool tech and historical charts. It's also about a classic piece of investment advice. Follow the big money. The analysis points out that major league institutions like Morgan Stanley, ARK Invest, and BlackRock have already poured over $1.7 billion into BMNR. The implication is pretty clear. The so-called smart money is already placing its bets, and this stock seems to be one of their favorite ways to get exposure to Ethereum's potential. So that brings us to the big question. Why this specific company, Bitmime Immersion Technologies? What makes BMINR the supposed ultimate proxy for Ethereum? Let's unpack the core of that argument. Okay, the entire proxy argument really boils down to one simple mind-blowing fact, what this company owns. According to the source, BMNR holds a staggering 3.63 million ETH in its treasury. No, that's not a typo. That's about 3% of all Ethereum in existence. As this chart shows, the company is, for all intents and purposes, just a massive vault of ETH, which means its value is directly and powerfully tied to the price of Ethereum. But you might be thinking, well, why not just buy ETH directly? And that's a fair question. The thesis offers two main reasons. First, for the big institutions, it's all about compliance. It is often way, way easier to buy a regulated stock than it is to hold crypto assets directly on your balance sheet. And second, it offers the potential for leveraged gains. Because these types of vehicles can trade at a premium to the assets they hold, a rise in ETH's price could get amplified in the stock price. And that brings us to the final piece of the puzzle. How exactly does the source get from a $7,000 Ethereum price all the way to a $91 stock price for BMNR? Let's walk through the math step by step, just as it's laid out in the thesis. All right, let's break down the math here. It all starts with that one key assumption. Ethereum hits seven grand. At that price, BMNR's huge pile of ETH would be worth over $25 billion. Simple enough. Then, if you divide that by the number of shares, you get what's called a net asset value, basically the underlying worth of $66 per share. But wait, there's more. The model then assumes that investors will be willing to pay a 30% premium to own the stock, which brings the price up to $86. Finally, it tacks on another $5 for staking yields. Those are the rewards you get for helping secure the Ethereum network, and that's how it lands on that final target of $91. And there's one last pretty explosive element to this prediction, a potential short squeeze. The source points to an unbelievably lopsided market, with 352 institutional bets that the stock will go up, for every two bets that it will go down. I mean, that's just wild. It basically creates a powder keg situation. If some really good news hits, like say a successful Fusaka launch, all those people betting against the stock could be forced to buy back in, creating a massive rush of buying pressure that could send the price just absolutely vertical. And honestly, this quote really wraps up the entire theses we've just walked through. It frames the Fusaka upgrade not as just some boring technical update, but as a fundamental fork in the road. It's the moment, according to this analysis, where Ethereum finally solves its core scalability problems, paving the way for mass adoption and cementing its place as the true backbone of a future multi-trillion dollar tokenized economy. It's a really bold and powerful claim that just perfectly summarizes this bullish outlook. And that is the complete breakdown of this fascinating and yes, very bullish thesis. It connects deep technology with historical patterns and institutional money flows to paint this picture of a potential super cycle. Of course, this is just one analysis, but it's a pretty compelling one to think about. Don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.